What's up YouTube, this is Chris, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, we're talking all about three penny stocks or stocks under $5 that I think are buys that are very safe and reputable companies that are going to do well in the medium to long term. And I wanna give you guys a lot of value here. So I'm giving you all the research into these stocks and why I'm buying these. And I normally don't do a lot of penny stocks and I certainly don't do any pump and dumps and very risky stocks like this. So you know that in this video, I'm gonna give you some really great high quality names and I'm gonna show you exactly how I found them and what exactly you can do to find some stocks like this as well. So we're gonna go right into this. So make sure you smash the like button if you are excited for this and you get a lot of value and let's get started. So on finviz.com, you can click on screener right here and it's like a search engine that you can use and customize and look for specific stocks in a particular industry or with some particular stats. For the purpose of this video and to provide you guys with the best quality penny stocks because there, there are hundreds and thousands of them out there. You know, how do you know they're any good? Uh, I wanna really avoid giving you guys any bad suggestions, right? So over here under market cap, I'm going to select right here small, 300 million to $2 billion. And I like at least 300 million because usually those tend to have at least some level of reliability and safety. You know, something like $50 million market cap, really micro sized companies, they can easily be pumped and dumped. If someone just goes out and buy a million shares, that's already a lot of the company. Now fundamentals, I'm going to focus on sales growth quarter over quarter, okay? And I'm going to choose something that is over 10%. I want something that's at least growing, you know, a, a decent amount, an okay amount. All right. And lastly, I'm going to go to technicals. Okay. Very easy. Basically three steps here. And under performance, I want a company that has their stock performing pretty well over the past year. Okay. So, for year, I could just go ahead and do 20%. So that narrows our list down from originally like thousands of stocks to 238. So in fact, we are going to under descriptive, descriptive tab, you're gonna to go to the right here under price. And this is where we find our penny stocks, right? So I'm gonna select stocks under $5. Okay, and that narrows our list down to 20 stocks. And then it becomes much more easier to look through these and understand and see what we want to research. And what I basically did was I looked at a couple of these different charts. I looked at the sector that they're in, the industry that they're in, the country that they're in, and ultimately found a couple of good ones. All right, guys. So the first stock we're talking about here is LEJU. This is a Chinese real estate marketplace and advertising agency. It's essentially very similar to a stock I covered previously on this channel, BEKE, which ARK Invest has been buying a lot. You can see that video up here. And I recently bought into that stock as well. But with Leju or Leju, however you want to pronounce it, this is kind of like the baby version. You know, it's a much smaller company, almost $400 million, $2.65 stock here today. Leju does a lot of things that are similar to Baker and Zillow. They have a online listing website, but also they do offline advertising too. And obviously the way that they make money is through that advertising and their commissions. So they have a partnership with Sina, which if you guys don't know, is kind of like, sort of like the Google of China, but maybe like the Yahoo actually. So it's more like number two. Uh, number one is Baidu in China. And on top of that, they have Alibaba, who is an indirect owner of uh, or shareholder of this company as well. So to have a company that uh, of that magnitude and doing partnerships with Leju, they've done partnerships with big holiday sales events, you know, 11-11 uh, in China and 12-12 are really big retail holidays. And even in real estate, it kind of uh, overflows into there. So to have a really great partner like that is certainly significant and I think that a lot of people just simply don't know about this stock and have never heard of it. One of the biggest companies in the world, Tencent, which has been going up a lot lately, is also invested in Leju. So this is not some kind of random no-name Chinese, you know, it's a scam or, or type of thing. 
It's uh, one of the most legit penny stocks I've ever come across. If you look at some of these numbers on the valuation, you see that this company has a forward PE in the low teens, right? The low tens. And that's really, really low for a company that is, uh, you know, we can, we can say an internet company, right? An e-commerce type of company, a real estate company. If you look at Zillow or even Beike, they have valuations that are much higher, four, five, six, seven, eight times higher than Leju. Now, they do have a slightly smaller growth rate though. Now, very remarkably, I see the company has around $270 million in cash, which is crazy because they don't really have any long-term debt on their balance sheet. So that pretty much means most of this company right now, the valuation is in cash right? $400 million or so market cap, but you have $270 million in cash, uh, some short-term liabilities, right? But no long-term debt. I think that's a really solid foundation and balance sheet for this stock. I think that as the Chinese real estate market, you know, we talked about this on the channel, uh, becomes a bit more regulated. There might be a bit of a slowdown in terms of sales and uh, in terms of price appreciation. But I think that is offset by the move in general to the digital landscape. Whereas a lot of time in China nowadays, still, there's a lot of people just doing uh, physical transactions, right? Actually uh, focusing more on uh, dealing with broker brokers uh, offline in order to make transactions. And I think that this overall is a space that's going to continue to grow. So I'm very excited for L-E-J-U. Stock number two that we're talking about here is L-I-V-X or Live by Live. And this is a company that we're gonna continue with the analogies here, kind of like a baby Spotify. So Spotify does, you know, obviously audio streaming. They're getting into podcasts very heavily over the past six or 12 months. And this is a company that is in a very similar space. So what they do is they do live uh, streaming of uh, music concerts, music events, uh, sometimes exclusives. You have this partnership with Pitbull, partnerships with a lot of different uh, leading artists, some of the biggest brand names out there, right? And they also have on-demand type of programs too, uh, with music and uh, podcasts, vodcasts as well. So a pretty diverse offering. They've been working on diversifying the business model for some time. The CEO of this company is very bullish. He owns 20% of the shares. And he says that this is a paradigm shift in the broader entertainment business where people are going to really uh, accept streaming and use that more often. And when things go back to normal, people might not actually go to physical places as often as they used to. So that's definitely an interesting thought. And this results so far in the business have been great. So the past quarter, they reported 50% plus revenue growth in a small company, right? 50% is very significant. It's very nice. And a lot of these other speculative type of penny stocks, they don't actually have any business results, right? Like I said earlier, I want to focus on companies that are, are either quite profitable right now, or they're very close to that profitability. And with this company, you're certainly seeing that the projection for next year is only about $3 million loss or so um, compared to what they've lost in the past. It's obviously in a very good step in the right direction. All right, so if you take a look at that balance sheet here for this company, it is not as great as a Leju, but it has 20 million in cash and 23 million in debt. So not too bad about a even ratio. That's kind of what I usually want as a minimum. Let's look at some of the stats, 135 events, 1800 artists streamed. You know, not all of them are A-list, but quite a lot of them are. 118 million live streams viewed, 2 billion hours listened, 2.2 billion podcasts downloaded, and 1 million plus paid subscribers, which they achieved very recently over the past quarter. And that's a very exciting uh, growth dimension for them. They've added hundreds of thousands of viewers or subscribers over the past year. So you can see that their subscription plans are basic, free plus four dollars a month and premium ten dollars a month and the different perks there so a subscription model i really like that because it's recurring revenue right it's a pretty much guaranteed stream of money that's flowing in and with all those subscribers you want to have advertisers right and sponsors of programs so 
Here you see that they have some pretty good relationships with the likes of McDonald's and Pepsi and Chipotle and Porsche, all of which were signed on very uh, recently over the past year. So they're doing very exciting things. And I've never really thought about this before, but when it comes to streaming platforms, I think this is very interesting when you see their future monetization paths. You have video on demand and distribution, AR and VR, you have data, very interesting, right? Because with uh, the streaming platform, you can really get an insight into what consumers like and you can pretty much monetize and sell that data to third parties, right? And lastly, they have merch, tipping and transactions, you know, other things uh, that you can do on the platform, right? Like buy merchandise from a podcaster that you like or a musical artist that you like. So that's another way for them to generate more revenue in this company. And if you take a look at the total addressable market here, the TAM for global digital music streaming, that's growing the fastest, much faster than actual live music, right? You can see here, it's only 3% growth for live music going to concerts, but online is where it's at, right? 23% growth year after year after year. Uh, according to this study from 2018 to 2021, that's what people are projecting. So there is a lot of room for growth for this company, which is growing faster than the industry average. And the last stock we're talking about here, stock number three, is one that I just did on channel. It's called Finvolution, F-I-N-V. I know a lot of you have already got on the train. Uh, the Finv fans or Finvolution fans, or you know, if anyone else can come up with a better nickname, for us, you can do that in the comments down below. But essentially, this is a another Chinese company. Okay, there's a lot of growth in China, can't deny it. And this is in the fintech space. It is a lending platform, very similar to something like a lending club you might find in the United States, or you know, plenty of other companies like this here. But you have a company that is trading at a ridiculously low valuation. So the forward PE on this company is around four. The average for the financial sector in general is 10 to 15. So at the very minimum, I think that this has two to three X potential in this company. And this is a company that has been uh, maintaining some growth over the past year. They've done about 10% growth in the latest quarter. They have a backdrop economic situation that is of course improving, as I mentioned earlier. So I do expect them to at least maintain that or uh, re really, really exceed that once a lot more people are in a better financial situation and a business environment where they want to uh, get more loans to start more businesses, to invest with, to buy properties and etc. On top of that, you have a uh, management which is doing all its best to return shareholder value. So they pay approximately a 3.5% dividend annually they constantly buy back shares. They just recently did an update on a huge buyback program, over $50 million uh, that's out there. And the co-founder of this company is constantly buying more shares and he owns, I believe 30% of the company. So he's a big believer. And if he keeps buying and insiders keep buying, that's a lot of confidence for uh, existing and future shareholders to get in as well. And lastly, with my bullish thesis is that simply the balance sheet of this company is phenomenal as well. So they have a ton of cash on the balance sheet, uh, more than two times, right? The amount of assets, to liabilities, they don't really have any long term debt. And so they have a ton of cash. And again, very similarly to uh, LEJU that we talked about earlier, they have so much cash on the balance sheet. It's like you're getting a really good value out of the company. Uh, it's not the same thing if you have a billion dollar company, but they only have uh, 50 million in cash, 10 million in cash, 1 million in cash, right? Then, you know, that, that would be really concerning if they had 1 million, but uh, not with this company. And so I think it's definitely a safe investment and a company that is in uh, the right spaces at this time. You know, FinTech is an area that is going to continue to grow. And if you want to hear more about this company, make sure you check out that video I just did exclusively on Finvolution and you'll find that very helpful. So as I mentioned previously, I am building a penny stock portfolio. I have $2,000 in it and we've only invested about $1,000 so far. You know, I don't like to go all in at once. So you can see here that in my 
penny stock portfolio, we started off with 125 shares of FinV or Finvolution. Uh, I think my cost basis is something like 370 ish or so. Um, we have 100 shares of Leju and we have 100 shares of Live by Live. So right now we are at a $120 profit and today alone we're up $50.50. So this is a pretty good start for the penny stock portfolio. And so you have here a financials credit services business, you have real estate services and you have entertainment. So very diversified. And by the way, I'm using a platform called Tastyworks for this um, challenge. I guess you could call it or this experiment if you guys want to create your own tastyworks account sign up for it you could do stocks and options and even futures contracts on there as well they have some very interesting things on the platform and you could get a sign up bonus right now to get a whole bunch of free stocks or free options so if you're interested in that please check out the link in the description but that pretty much wraps it up for this video guys i hope you enjoyed the three penny stocks to buy or three stocks to buy under five dollars they've been vetted and approved by chris here and i think that they're gonna perform well in the coming year and hey at the very least we've done some pretty strong research into uh, profitable and soon to be profitable companies that are certainly not penny stocks that are the pump and dump kind you know i don't like to get dumped on I don't think anyone likes to, right? But anyway, comment down below if you are going to buy Loju, Live by Live, or Finvolution. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And until next time, my friends, stay well and invest responsibly.